Welcome to the 320 Podcast, where we encourage you to reach for the immeasurably more life with Christ. From discussions on scripture, to poetic messages, to dreaming big with Jesus, you will enjoy a variety of episodes brought to you by Shelley Wilson Ministries. To find out more about Shelley Wilson Ministries and the many resources available to you, please visit our website at www.shellywilsonministries.org. Hey you guys, it's Shelly. Welcome to this week's 320 podcast. Yes, you're correct. You did not get a podcast last week. I had actually already recorded this uh, once and, you know, what can I say? Something went wrong and I had to delete it. So it would help me if you would let me know if your experience on the other side of this microphone, if you're getting the audio okay, because I'm having some weird recording issues that did not start until they updated, you know, the computer. So um, I'm going to talk to you about the same thing I, I've already recorded once for you. It may not be very long because I think it's more um, experiential ministry than anything. And because so many of you guys are preparing to launch out, uh, this will be important for you, but it's not only going to be for you because... It doesn't matter what season you're in. There is something that you have to learn that is super important. And it's the message really today is called be focused and stay focused. And here's here's what I mean by this. I I was looking for a scripture. Um, The book of Nehemiah is such a great book. Uh, Y'all know I like to talk about Nehemiah. In the past, I've done some... uh, podcast that kind of talked about the book of Nehemiah. I talk about distractions. I talk about consistency and all of those things, which are super important. Uh, But lately, not only because it's been something God has been putting on my heart, but some of you guys have actually said these words to me. Uh, The Lord is telling me to stay focused. And, And some of you, I have said, listen, I want you to guard your heart right now, right before it's time for you to launch the new work God is doing in you, because I know, based on experience, that the devil always shoots something your way or my way to get me off track a little bit, okay? And so if I were to take you to a scripture, Proverbs 4, 25 says this, let your eyes look straight ahead, fix your gaze directly before you, okay? Uh, There's another scripture that, that... says set your face like flint and um, you really have got to learn to be that way because if you are not someone who can be focused and stay focused then the devil will have you uh, for lunch I promise you why because whatever works he continues to do y'all keep hearing me say that because a friend of mine is always saying that to me Shelly whatever works he keeps doing right so you've got to learn to be focused and to stay focused so let me give you a real life example if when i used to work from home and i was still working in the medical industry uh, my company without was out of san francisco right and so i didn't have i wasn't punching a clock they didn't know when i was on the job and when i wasn't in the job unless we had scheduled meetings or whatever over the phone but i learned to be a self-starter right i learned Uh, how to work without people having to micromanage me and that has completely benefited me today because of all the various facets of ministry God has called me into I have to be focused and stay focused right because at any given moment a thousand things could come at me needing my attention and so I want to talk to to you about how do you how do you literally do that right how do you literally do that Uh, i'll tell you what god has been speaking to me just as uh as late as this saturday i I had planned on uh, going somewhere uh, saturday night and i woke up and god had just called me into a place with him and i sat in my pajamas all day uh listening uh, with the lord studying uh trying to understand what he was saying to me because I have been so much in prayer guys about the coming live radio show on royalty for real radio for women and I had told the Lord I didn't want to do anything till I knew what his format was going to be and I needed him to give me the blueprint right 
And how in the world would I step into that with what's already on my plate? I was concerned. I wanted to be sure that it was God. I wanted to be sure uh, because, you know, whatever he's graced you with, you will have the strength to do. It doesn't mean it'll be easy, but I don't want to walk into anything that he's not gracing me for in this season. And in the meantime, I get this, this, um, I wonder if I have it on my phone y'all i should read this uh streams in the desert to you y'all know i i subscribe to that um i should have it in my photos sorry real time right real time yes here it is uh okay this is what i got saturday this is it and listen i had already spent so much time in my closet going lord i'll do whatever you ask me to do but i have to know you're with me. I have to know this is your heart and not my heart. I have to know that I'm not martyring myself for some cause that you're not putting your breath behind. I mean, you know, because sometimes we just get busy to be busy and that's not the Lord. Like I got to know his anointings on this thing because everything else I do will be affected by it. Right. So this is what it says, y'all. You, you can't make this stuff up. Okay, it says in her devotional, this is a time to reevaluate the use of your energy and to streamline your activity so that you can be more efficient. There are things you do by force of habit that are no longer relevant to your existence. Let go of those things so that you can move forward unhindered. Okay, the scripture that is used is Romans 12, 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, right? So I, I went, whoa, Lord, okay, clearly then I must have some things I need to streamline, uh, you know, and I, I'm, the Lord has blessed me with uh, some administrative gifting, and so I have to, I, I know how to streamline, um, I just don't always stick to what I streamline, and that's what gets me in trouble, y'all heard me talk of that, about that before, when God gives you a blueprint and you don't stick to it, you get tired, you don't get the rest you need, um, you end up not getting everything done, and I'll be honest with you, because I didn't stick to my blueprint last week, y'all didn't get a podcast, and you know, I cannot tell you the Lord was happy about that, all right? Because I should have had it done, and I couldn't get it done because I wasn't sticking to my blueprint. And so as God is working with me this weekend, and then going, okay, Shelly, I need you to streamline some things. You know, I'm having to create, listen to me, this is, this is what I've learned in this season. In, in my old life, I had to learn, uh, I, although I was at home working, from 7.30 to about 4 or 4.30, it was work time for me with maybe lunch from 12 to 1. I set aside dishes. I set aside laundry. You see what I mean? Because if I didn't know how to be focused and stay focused, I would have, you know, maybe put my work to the side and got the laundry done, got the dishes done, and not not uh, had good integrity, good work ethic when it came to the things I was actually getting paid to do, right? It's the same way today in ministry for me. Um, and y'all are going to hear some of this for the first time, like the Lord. And But I hope it's it's help, It's going to help you, too, because many of you work jobs. You're trying to figure out, how do I work jobs? How do I take care of family? How do I do this assignment from God? How do I launch this assignment from God? How do I stay effective without wearing myself out? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you what he's given me. All right, so... Uh, because sometimes, you know, you guys might ask me, well, can I meet with you on this day or that day? And, and lately, you've, many of you have heard me say, I can only do it on Thursday, right? Um, and there has certainly been um, examples that haven't fallen into that in the, in the past. But in this season, Lord has given me a really strict blueprint of, okay, it's Mondays when I come in, like we always have groups on Mondays. Right. So my my be focused, stay focused is always on what is God going to do that evening. You know, I come in to work. I have emails to check. I have messages um, possibly on the phone. Uh, all of these kinds of bills to pay. You know, there's just all kinds of other things I have to get done. And and then 
Tuesday, I am recovering usually from Monday. I don't see anybody on Tuesdays. It's a quiet day for me. It's usually a love letter day. That's what my heart is focused on. I'm also in putting things into the radio station, which must be do done to keep it going. We have reports that have to go out. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes administration. Coming, you know, soon on Wednesdays is a live show at noon. I will not be able to do anything during that live show, y'all. It's going to be live. So how do I manage that? Number one, I can tell you, because I know myself, and you have to know yourself, and you have to stay within the parameters of how God created you. I can compartmentalize things that he wants me to do, but that means I have to have really hard lines. In other words, that day is all about radio to me. That day, I'm not just going to do the live show. I'm going to probably go to doing all my media, all my podcasting, all of the uh, poetry recordings, um, all of those things that have to be done will be done on that day. You see what I mean? Thursday, Thursday, God has shown me that that is my day where I'm taking appointments to see people one-on-one. -on -one. I have phone calls that I make that are already scheduled on my Thursdays with people out of this area who need healing, who need deliverance, who need mentoring. And, and that's appointment. That is based on appointment. And that is Man, I never thought I would get to this place where that would be necessary, but I have to tell you, it's necessary. We also have on Tuesdays, remember, Jan sees counseling, so I can't just see people in here on Tuesdays anyways, even if I did want to on Tuesdays, because we already have the building allotted to those who are here for counseling with Jan, and we like privacy. Um, I don't like multiple people in the building at one time. It's accidentally happened before, but I don't like that because I want people to be comfortable when they're here. I want them to cry as loud as they need to. Y'all know that sometimes if we do deliverance, it's going to get a little crazy up in here, and I don't want it to freak anybody out, right, who's not used to our world. And so there is a whole lot that goes on here, right, that really isn't seen uh, by the public, right? Um, and then I take off on Fridays. At least I try to. I really try hard to. Lately, it's been hit or miss, but, you know, it's better for my body, right? God has been talking to me, y'all know, about my health, about my exercise, and I've got to figure out a way to work all that in. So how do you do all that? Well, you do it by listening to God's instruction for you. How do I be focused and stay focused? One, I start with the Lord. I mean, it's the only way. I'm just going to be honest with you. I start with Christ in the morning, you know, where I can worship him, where I can listen to him. If I want to listen to a sermon like I did this morning, he put uh, two sermons actually on my radar that I was to walk through today. And he spoke just directly to me and confirming for me things about the live radio show that I needed to know, you know. And so I, I had my marching orders because I spent time with the Lord about what that radio live radio show was going to be about so i'm learning more and more and more that if i want to take more ground with jesus then i have to let some things go so my hands are free to pick up the next thing right when the mantle changes so i have to uh, set my eyes to look straight ahead right um and that can be hard for you and hard for me because y'all know i really like to meet needs uh, when they arise, um, but just like if you if you you are at a job, right? Whatever job you're at, you know sometimes you can't get to some things till you get off that job, right? And so it's the same way here. So I, I didn't I wasn't able to get to some emails last week, many actually um, that came through, and it's it's just this season we're in, right? It's just this season we're in, but I'm committed to be focused and stay focused. Why? Because God knows best. He knows what's best for me. He knows what's best for those who need me. And if I don't stick with that uh, blueprint which he's given me, right? We've talked about this in the past. I will never be focused, and I will never stay focused. And I'm going to tell you, it's one thing to be focused, right? To start out focused. It's quite another to stay focused, um, I was listening to, maybe it was Beth Moore one time, and she said, you know, 
if you're called to be a writer, you better learn how to put up your phone. And, and, and that is so true because with all of the different apps, with all of the uh, text messaging, with all of the um, notifications for emails, it is a constant ding, 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 right? Can everybody just say amen? So if I don't put away my phone, which that is something God has been speaking to me clearly, is Shelly. While you're focused, put your phone away. Deal with those things later, right? Right? So, because this day and age, you have text messages, you have phone calls, you have emails, you have Facebook notifications, Instagram notifications, whoever's on TikTok, that's not me, but that's some of y'all, or X or Twitter, whatever it was, and this new threads thing, which I'm, I'm kind of over all of this new stuff. Um, if you're not careful... The tail will wag the dog. You understand. And when God has given you a mission and an assignment, you have to stay the course. If you do not stay the course, nothing will ever get done. Um, before I had to delete the last recording on this, uh, I had brought up, which I think you guys have heard me talk about before, um, two situations, one where Paul is uh, walking and, and this woman with a spirit of divination is following him around and, and she's saying all she's saying all the right things. These are servants of the most high God. After about three days, he turned around and said, spirit, come out of her. He he noticed there was something in her that was not of the God of the Lord. And he was frustrated, apparently, and that she was just a distraction in that in that time to the work that he was trying to do and then we go to nehemiah where where nehemiah is building a wall there's lots of people involved lots of tools lots of different trades involved in this and there is a constant request for him to come down from that wall right and 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 one of the things that you guys have to learn because some of y'all have asked me about this recently is um, remember, because we've we've kind of been taught in the church um, things that are unwise, you know, we're to be as uh, wise as a serpent, as innocent as a dove. You have to understand that when God sets you up to do something for him, that not only does he send people, places and things to you, but the devil sends people, places and things to you. Okay, and you have to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord to know what voice is speaking to you. Okay, is it a voice taking you off of mission and off a of task? Is it just the wind you're you're being? And I tell you how I usually know, guys, when I'm when I have stepped outside the will of God for my life because I start feeling so confused and overwhelmed. The peace is gone. Um, I start dropping balls right and left on my things that work that need to be done, which happened with me last week. And it was because I did not stay within my parameters of what God had given me, right? Um, another, you know, another one of the things is you have to learn to let something go sometimes to pick up something else, right? It can be as little as like I'm having to say, okay, guys, I love, I love all y'all so much, right? But Thursdays are going to be my day to see people. Uh, if you need me on the phone, like I'm going to, I'm asking you, I need y'all's help in this, right? I need your help. Like it's got to be on Thursdays. It just can't be any other day because the other days are allotted. You may have to do that too in your life, that this is your day to do this. This is your day to do that. You may need to, you know, we, many of us have kids or grandkids that all comes into play. Family things come into play. Um, that's why you've got to ask the Lord what's good for you, because if you're not careful, you will be taken off task every time, every single time. If I'm constantly blown by every request, if, if, the, if every time the wind blows, I change direction, I change my focus, I change where I'm going, I change what I'm doing, I'm changing my rules, I'm changing this. You see what I mean? And, I, and one, of the, one of the big things, too, that is more of a warning for you, because this has happened to me so many times, guys. You could ask Jan. Uh, very often when God is, is, is preparing your new assignment and it's just almost there, the devil sends a counterfeit. And it, it can look like an angel of light. It looks really good. And I've gotten into so many things in my 
my 20 something years that after a few months in it, I knew I was in the middle of something that was not God's will. I had been seduced into it. I had been lured into it. Maybe sometimes what happened was I had such a need to be a part of something or such a need to have friendships or such a need to, you know, be with a tribe that I would walk into something with a pure heart. And then three or four months into it, I'm like, this is not the Lord for me. It doesn't always have to be negative. It's just you figure out pretty quick, this wasn't God because you'll get, I was, I would be exhausted. I would be tired. I realized I, all my boundaries were gone. You know what I'm, I'm saying? And I, and I've told y'all in the past, the Lord had a very precious sweet spot with me that if I got outside of the sweet spot, my body would no longer hold up. And that has been recently true, too. And, and God is so patient and gracious with us. Because I'm going to tell you what. This week, I deserve a good spanking. I'm just going to tell you all straight up. I deserve a good spanking. Because I've known better. And I've, I've continued to push every boundary that there is. And that's, you know, after Saturday, that's just, that's just going to have to stop. Because at, at this point, what that means is... It's not that I'm just fumbling through it, trying to do it right. It means I'm now walking in disobedience because I know that I know that I know what he's telling me to do and calling me to do. And that's the way you have to start looking at it. Don't be uh, so gentle with yourself that you keep allowing yourself to make the same mistakes as if they won't matter because they will matter. They'll matter to your health. They'll matter to your mental health. They'll matter to your pr productivity in the kingdom. They'll matter to your effectiveness in the kingdom. And if you continue to push and push and push and push without adhering to what God has said, this is when you set boundaries for your own self. That's a good word, Lord. You know how we always say worry about your own self, that, that little meme on Facebook? Well, it's time to worry about your own self. It's time to worry about your own self because Shelly needs to worry about her own self, right? If I don't worry about my own self, I have nothing left to give anybody else. And the assignment God has called me to, like Nehemiah, the, the wall will never get built, right? Uh, this coming month will be time to drop another newspaper, which I have not even started on, right? So y'all are probably going to, I'm going to be a little quiet probably for a, a couple weeks and may not even be seeing people on Thursdays. Why? Because I have a dead, I'm going to have a deadline I've got to get to. You've got to learn to be focused and stay focused. Be focused and stay focused. And here is the hard part, but here's the secret. What is the word? The secret weapon. Oh, I like that word. Here is the secret weapon of the kingdom. If you can be focused and stay focused, the devil loses every time. You know why? Because there have been times, even when I have been so sick in the natural, that I knew something had to get done. Um, I, I went to speak at my spiritual mom's funeral. And I'm going to tell you all the spiritual warfare I went through just to get there. I wanted to call my sweet friend, her daughter, and say, I am so sick. And the Lord just wasn't going to let me do it. Why? Because I had an assignment to fulfill. And although I was so sick, trying not to breathe on anybody, trying not to talk to anybody, God kicked me out of my house and said, you will go fulfill this assignment. And that's the way it is. That is the secret weapon that when God says it's time to do the thing, that there is nothing and nobody that can detour you from it. Okay? Because there have been times in my past where anything could get me off the assignment. Anything, anybody could get me off the wall God was calling me to build. And at the end of the day, like every other podcast we talk about, every writing, everything y'all heard from me in groups, it's got to be Jesus or them or Jesus or it, or Jesus, or me sometimes, right? Sometimes I've got to get my own self out of the way and do it sick as a dog. But the command is that I go fulfill the assignment God has laid before me. And there is no one else that can do it if I don't show up. 
Because there's only one me and there's only one you. I mean, let that sink in. There's only one me and there's only one you. You know? So where is it that you need to get focused so you can stay focused? Huh? Where is it? You remember the days, guys, when we we had uh, people would call and leave you voicemails and you call them back. Nowadays, we don't, many don't leave voicemails, right? Uh, we just call people back because we see that there was a missed call. I'm not so sure that that's a good thing anymore because um, it, it makes it, it, it's almost like, uh, you know, Facebook is always sending me these, hey, people you may know, you know what, please stop that. Or, you know, I can tell based on the ads they're sending me, they're, they're listening to my conversations, right? Um, I don't like the fact that, you know, you need privacy. I need privacy, right? I don't need people tracking me all the time on social media and things like that. Uh, you and I have to have good boundaries. Because let me tell you, one of the worst distractions in the world right now, for me, I'll be honest with you, is scrolling on Facebook mindlessly. And I look up and an hour's gone by and I'm like, wow, you know, what a waste. What a waste. Shelly, be focused, stay focused, you know? And so we're in a world where it is, we are bombarded, bombarded with a million things. Y'all know, um, I've shared with y'all before that I, I really don't, it's rare, it's rare. I try not to, uh, I don't call anybody, I don't answer emails, I don't answer text messages or anything, typically, typically as a standard before 10 a.m. Why? Because that is my time with the Lord. I have recognized in my own self that I have this problem. And if I start start working, okay, if I get answer a text or if I call or if I do what, sometimes it'll get me wholly out of the presence of God. If I'm in the presence of God, the problem is I listen to worship music on my phone while I'm worshiping. Do you know I'm having to put my phone away, guys? Why? Because it's not just the worship music that's on my phone. It's the Facebook notica notifications, right? It's the Instagram. It's the emails that are coming through. It's the um, the YouTube notifications that somebody put up a new YouTube. Like, it's just too much already, you know? And if we're not careful, all of our energy goes to that, and never to the work. A friend of mine and, and I were talking, and she said, you know, Shelly, you'll notice I'm not doing, she has a church uh, in Dallas, and she said, you know, God really kind of, I guess, convicted me to not spend so much time doing live videos for those who are on Facebook, because I have a church with sheep in it who are assigned to me, and I said, do you know I feel the same way? That those who come here are going to get my full attention, not those who don't come here. Now, there are some of you that, that I mentor outside of this area, and that's different, right? We're, we, uh, I'm already working with you. But I'm just saying for the, for the public, uh, I'm not going to spend my wheels, spend my time or energy doing that in this season unless God directs it because I have... Wow, we have grown so much that I have way more women to take care of. And each woman has a sweet thing that they need from me. And each woman, you know, if you come to groups, which is our best thing we can say to you, because it, it means that we get to minister to everybody at once. I get to meet more needs at one time because there are some weeks I have no time to get everybody in for a one-on-one -on -one or phone calls or anything like that. It's just come into that season, right? You got to be so careful, guys, so careful, guys, while God is launching you out, go ahead and sit down with the Lord and say, God, give me the blueprint for this season. How do I be focused and stay focused, not just on you, but for you? Hear that, not just on Jesus, but for Jesus, right? Because at the, at the beginning of your day, this is what it looks like, okay? And I want you to begin to just picture this. You're clocking in every day. And your boss is Christ. And he gets to tell you, if you ask him, what he wants from you that day. He's likely preparing you for something in advance. 
right? But if you're never seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness, then all the things that are supposed to be added to you will never come to you. That's just biblical principle. So every day I have to make sure I'm doing that my to-do list is actually his to-do list. You know, it's interesting when we read about Christ, he says he, he only did what he saw the Father doing. He only did what he saw the Father doing. I was, uh, not yesterday, Saturday when I was reading in the scriptures, it says I was, I was reading about being a friend of God because it was really stirring in my heart. Lord, what makes somebody a friend of yours? What makes somebody a friend? And besides the fact that it says those that fear him are his friends. Think about that. Those who fear him are his friends. He also says, those who do the will of my Father will enter the kingdom of heaven. Woo! That'll mess some people up. Those who do the will of the Father. Well, the will of the Father is not everything for me, and it's not everything for you. But what is the will of the Father for your life? Because if you do everything but that, then we're off. We're not fulfilling what the Father wants. So Jesus only did what the Father does. And now we're, we're one with Christ like he is one with the Father. And we are to do what the Father wants us to do. So Jesus gives me my, he gives me my battle plan, right, every day. And so I'm just here to tell you all today, it's the season to be focused and stay focused. Whatever that is. I don't care if all of hell comes against you girls, and I'm going to tell you it will. When God gives you an assignment that's super important, you're going to be hit with all kinds of things. Y'all know I don't lie about this kind of stuff. I will, not, I will not be the people that say, oh, peace, peace, everything's going to be fine. Nope, you better prepare for battle. Because the minute God tells you you're about to do something, all of hell's going to come against you. And it'll come in ways that you don't think are hell. Okay, it'll, It may come through family members uh, that need you more than you think Jesus needs you right? But what are you going to say? Are you going to say, well, I already have, actually, I already have an assignment from the Lord. So I'm going to have to wait to babysit the grandkids. That's how I have to, my kids know, right? Um, And there's such a good balance that we can get to. But if you've already committed something to Christ, you need to fulfill that commitment. That's just the end of story. I can get all kinds of requests to come and speak somewhere, but I've already have something on my schedule, right? And it may be kind of less public and less known to people. I don't care. It's what God told me to do. Be focused, Shelly. Stay focused. Right? What work, Whatever is in my lane, um, I'm going to share this with you too. Thank you, Lord. That's, this is a really good thing. Um, part of my being focused and staying focused, it can be as small as, um, so how do I decide uh, where God's money goes to, because it's his money, not mine. Y'all know we don't take salaries here. I do this for free. It's my life's work. I love it. I'm glad I don't have to ask for a dime. Um, God sends us money when we need it, and, and many of you have been vessels that he's blessed us with, um, and he, you know, he has just made it that way for us. I'm so grateful, um, but because we're a public you know, ministry, I do get requests from time to time or for people wanting money. And um, I'll tell you a sweet story that's a really good thing in how I made my decision. Because maybe, you know, this is part of being focused, staying focused, right? Because you have to learn what your lane is and stay in that lane. Otherwise, you're going to be blown with the wind. I promise you, out to sea, and you'll never get what you're called done called to do done plus the devil knows how to siphon money from you if you're not putting it to to the place that God wants you to put it okay when we're mercy hearts and we're givers and we love charity uh, and I'm big about that right I never can outgive God you know I feel like my life is a hundred percent tithe <laughs> these days I tell my mom and I love it that way I get to see so many adventures because God requires us to be givers. And he says, I reap what I sow. And I know how to sow into good ground, right? I know how to give things away when we have extra. I know how to bless people with money even when we have lack, when God tells me to do it. But years ago, this has been many years now, someone um, uh, I knew uh, had a family member in uh, going to the mission field. And so they wanted to know if I would support them. 
uh, him on the mission field financially. And uh, we had just opened this building, and I really took it to the Lord because that was a wonderful mission, a beautiful thing to support. But I, I had my measuring stick, right? And my measuring stick of being focused and staying fo- focused was to know what my lane was. And my lane was to undergird women. So that, you know, and this was a gentleman. Uh, so I knew that was outside of my lane. And then, you know, for the work of healing and deliverance and that which we do now, um, writing and those kind of things, releasing the messages God gives me. And so that was outside of my lane. So I opted not to support him on the mission field, not because I didn't think it was a great thing, but it wasn't my thing, right? It wasn't what God called me to do. And if you're not careful, you'll use all your resources, which God meant for you to have, for his kingdom work and you'll give it all away thinking you're doing the right thing when the truth is the enemy just knows how to get it from you okay and so i want you to be focused stay focused even with those kinds of things all right be wise as serpents innocent as doves okay i'm trying to think if there's anything else i guess i could look back at proverbs 425 again let your eyes look straight ahead this is a word for you Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Whatever God is telling you to do, that's what you need to do. No less and no more than that. Okay? That has to come first and everything else comes second. That comes first. That's your priority. Learn how to prioritize. Learn how to schedule better. Learn time management, guys. If I didn't have decent time management, I would never get a thing done. Okay, and then learn how God is. How are you going to be able to take care of yourself while you take care of other people too? Because the Lord told me when we opened this building, Shelly, if you'll take care of them, I'll take care of you. But I still have a responsibility, correct, for for my rest, for my uh, renewal, for my Sabbaths and all of those things um, so that I can get filled back up with the Lord and pour out more and more and more. So, God, I just want to thank you, God, that I guess today's recording was more of what you wanted than before. I don't know. I thank you, Lord, that you are really challenging us to to be focused and stay focused. God, that we're to set our face like flint and not to be moved off the assignments you have called us to. Lord, I'm asking you to give every listener Uh, a backbone. I keep saying this lately. I keep saying this lately. Give them more of a spiritual backbone, Lord, where they just know that they know that they know with their knower that this is the way I should go, right? God, that they would hear that voice of yours behind them saying, this is the way in which you should walk. Father, I pray that you would divide as, as, they, as they come and sit in your presence uh, with a list of things that you would begin to erase what needs to go away and add to what needs to come, that you would, you would be the master of their daily schedule, of their monthly schedule, of their yearly schedule. I pray, Lord, that you would help them become crystal clear on what is their lane and what is not their lane. And I pray, God, that you would help us to be strong and courageous to let go of what's over. Because, boy, that is sure a hindrance for many of us. Let go of what is over. What is taking time that you don't have. What is taking resources that you don't have. What no longer bears fruit. Um, And even if it does, if God is saying that season's over, let it go. Because he has something new for you. And there are lives that depend on you stepping into the new. And then, Father, help us help us to uh, not just be focused, but stay focused, to stay the course, to not get off the blueprint, Lord, to not get off the blueprint. God, help us with the map. What should the map look like? Where do I go here? Where do I go tomorrow? Am I going anywhere or do I stay put? God, you are the captain of the ship. The captain of the ship. Lord, I I just break off all false guilt off of people in Jesus' name. Every people-pleasing tendency, I command every people-pleasing tendency to now fall off everybody. And you will rise with a strong spiritual backbone because Jesus says it's this way, this way, this way. And everything else has to be removed. 
I pray, God, that we will be more like soldiers in this season. We don't move till we're commanded to move. We stand at attention when you tell us to stand at attention. When you tell us to march, forward march, we are forward marching, and we don't stop until the commander-in-chief says, Halt one, two, in Jesus' name. Let us be good hearers of your commands, Lord. And Jesus, let us be as the polished arrow which hits the mark right on the target, that we are no no longer just a machine gun Christian where we just hit all the targets just hoping one, one hits the right spot. No, let us be polished arrows that are pulled out of the quiver by you, the the master archer, and that when you let go of us, we hit the mark right on the money because it's where you said we were to go and how we were to go. And Lord, we bless you because this is going to be a season of launching. This is a season of flying, God. Thank you for that. This is a season of adventures. It's a season of warfare, but it's a good warfare because we're going to get sharp. We're going to get strong. Our muscles are going to get built stronger. And Lord, prepare our bodies for this war in Jesus' name. And then help us, God, if we're in a season of healing, that we stay focused in the healing. And we don't let our eyes start venturing out to this, that, or the other, but we stay focused on the healing because it is such an important part of the destiny to come. Help us not circumvent what you called to be in this season, that we do not do any more than what you've said and we not do we do not do any less than what you said. May every distracting voice now fall in Jesus' name. And may the voice of Christ rise to the top. May the voice of Christ rise to the top where opinion of man and the fear of man falls off of every one of us in Jesus' name. Know who you are because you know who he is. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, listen. Y'all have helped me so much the last few weeks. Some, Many of you actually have messaged me saying, oh, my goodness, I needed exactly that word. You said the exact word I asked for. Y'all, that helps me so much, you know, because it, you, when you send me something like that, you're encouraging me that, okay, I heard well, right? Y'all know I don't, I don't practice perfection over here. Uh, but I love when you, when you let me know that God confirmed something uh, to you just by going through this. So today it's just, hey, experiential ministry in the raw. This is what it's really like, guys, to try to stay on the wall and keep building and not getting pulled off the wall. So you start building your wall and set your par- parameters in such a way that you will be focused and stay focused. All right, I'll catch y'all next week. We hope today's episode has blessed you and encouraged you to pursue Christ passionately. To join us again for more encouragement, equipping, and empowering, subscribe to the 320 Podcast. We would also like to invite you to enjoy our round the clock radio station, Royalty for Real Radio for Women, at royaltyforreal.com. That's royalty, the number four, real.com.